Lots of fireworks here, Zyrene. Yes, and also Hong Kong attitude. In order to figure out side selection, it goes by the time in the win against each other. Hong Kong attitude had the faster win, and so they selected blue side. Something we have seen, if well, we haven't actually seen any side selection, but we can see why people are favoring the blue side, getting the early pick on the Rakan or on an AD carry. But the interesting thing, though, is Hong Kong attitude lost when they were blue side, and Fenerbahce won when they were red side. That makes a lot of sense, because they have to win on one side. Well, so. I'm just saying, Hong Kong attitude put themselves in the position that, you know, based on the two games they played previously, was the one that they lost in. Yeah, and we're going to see a slight change in the bands as well. Talia Chogath and Rakan being banned here by Hong Kong attitude. Jarvan and the Alistair removed from the pool by Fenerbahce. And now they're looking at their final band. Sejuani is going to be it. She is a 100% pick ban across this tournament. And Kalista jumps to mind. Not on that pick ban list, Tristana also up there and that is Kragus locked in here saying hey Crash didn't look that comfortable on champion that wasn't it and we'll see what happens and he picked the Sejuani so we're going to see another new champion coming out from Crash personally I really want to see him go for something super aggressive we know that's his play style we know that can work and it's the sort of thing that because you haven't played it against Hong Kong Attitude before it could definitely upset the apple cart I don't know uh so the Hecarim I don't think it's a Thaldrin special I think he's giving a shout out to Tabe on Hong Kong Attitude as the coach for the Hecarim strats yep. a while ago. And this is a matchup that means a lot, especially for Turkey, because we talked about well, previously, they lost to the Gigabyte Marines, Supermassive did, to make it into MSI. They were overtaken by the Vietnamese region as a, the one of that powerhouses coming out of the emerging regions. Now, Fenerbahce is saying, all right, you know what? We're, we can match the LMS, and they might be able to get them spot themselves a spot at that table as the number one seed. Once again, we see the Tristana priority alongside that Lulu. Very good AD carry support duo. A Syndra pick early on for the Hong Kong Attitude. And Callista still on the cards here, yeah. Zyrene. If HKA want it, they say, not quite yet. We're going for the Galio instead. Yeah, a lot of tankiness here. So the question is, do they lock in a jungler here for Crash? Or do they go for locking in a mid laner and matching the Syndra before counters can be taken away? Whoa. That would be more aggressive. Nidalee in the jungle for Crash here, probably. That would be very aggressive, but at the same time, double ardent sensor users could be on the table here. It is locked in, I believe. Yes, yes it is. Yeah. We're in the ban phase. Yes, we are. Fenerbahce probably going to look towards those AD carry bans next. Callista still there. Cogmore as well. You've got a composition that protects pretty well already from Hong Kong attitude. So taking away those hyper carry AD carries can definitely do a lot of work. Yeah, Kogma, but. And there's also Zaya on the table, Callista. There's not enough for you to really ban away all of them. You just have to kind of shift your preferences. Makes a lot of sense. Fenerbahce looking towards a top laner and a mid laner left. So the Oriana ban against the Syndra LeBlanc is something we've seen work well into it before as well. Still a few other things that could be counter picks on the table. We'll see what Frozen has in mind, but Crash on an aggressive jungler. He made his name on aggressive jungling. We've seen him on the Gragas and Sejuani so far this tournament. Now we're going to get a little taste of what Crash was known for back on his debut in Longju and also how he's been doing in the LSPL with Vici Gaming. Last time Mission picked this Syndra, he had a very good performance. Frozen picked Oriana into it, isn't going to be able to do that this time, nor is his favorite pick Talia up. So we're going to see something new from Fenerbahce. Kalista banned out from by them, which means we're probably going to see Zaya for Hong Kong Attitude as that final AD carry. Varus is an option as well, though. Varus is the one that we see into Tristana if you want to win the laning phase. We just saw it beat Reckless. We just saw it over in the NALCS as one of the counters. I remember constantly Dignitas versus TSM. Varus is the preferred AD carry for the lane phase over uh, up against the Tristana. Well, that is going to be the lock as well. Tanky top laners at the moment for both the teams. We're looking towards that support finally for Hong Kong attitude. Ardent Sensor is the way to go, it seems, but we have seen teams win without it, and maybe something like an Alistair, oh, it's just already banned out, could work. Ah, the Blitzcrank. Hong Kong attitude in the game earlier today. The two bands against them in the second phase were Janna and Blitzcrank, and now Kai Wing has his hands on that champion can work into Lulu especially. You're isolating that support. Thresh into Lulu is another matchup we see so commonly because you can just kill her again and again in the lane. Yeah, and this is something that's not that great into Tristana if he buffers the rocket jump appropriately. But another champion that's quite a good matchup here is the Echo into the Syndra. 
Echo had received some buffs some time ago, phase dive, cooldown, etc. And so, once again, we're seeing him here, but this allows the 1-3-1 one, one, double teleport to come through from Fenerbahce and allow them the potential of playing the macro game a little bit better. But you have to watch for that pick. The Blitzcrank is a game changer. So both teams have game changing picks. The Echo into Syndra counter pick is something we see well, we don't see as often, but we always talk about when you see a Syndra locked in earlier. The Blitzcrank into Lulu, so powerful as well. Both teams taking their fate into their own hands with some confident picks and bans in this pick ban phase. And this is where you pull out the cards. This is where you have to get your ace out. Because if you lose this, you're going to get him much, much worse position, much, more, much less likely to make it out. And you need to have whatever advantage. So. It doesn't matter if you're saving some strats for later on, or if you make it to the elimination, or if you make it to groups. You gotta show everything here. We're seeing the Nidalee, we're seeing the counter pick echo, and we're seeing the Blitzcrank. And think about how important it is for both these regions to be able to get that first seed as well. You don't guarantee yourself a space in Worlds groups, but you can be much more sure of it. A second representative for the uh, for uh, Hong Kong, Sorry, Hong Kong Attitude from the LMS. Yeah, I'm a little bit tired. Third from representative, of course, from GPL. For the LMS. A third representative for the LMS and a first representative for Turkey, if Fenerbahce. I always get that first position and the win. It's a monumental game for both of these teams. And we are on to the Summoner's Rift. And we'll see what happens. Blitzcrank, funny business can happen level one. See what happens right out of the gate here. Because these have been slow games. When they play each other, it's been really slow. Nothing happens for about 20 minutes, and then it's explosive. But now there's more proactivity. So if this game is slow, if it's the traditional HKA versus Fenerbahce matchup that we have seen across the last couple of days, which team is looking to have the advantage at that 20 to 30 minute mark? I would say that they're both actually kind of okay because Fenerbahce, they have the split push. Sure, your jungler isn't as good, but you have the Tristana. And then Hong Kong Attitude, you have some pretty good tools here. And then you have the game changer of the Blitzcrank. If I had to go pound for pound in the late game, if it's just completely even, I feel like Hong Kong Attitude have great ways to upset what's going on uh, with the fact they have good engage, good pick, uh, and Fenerbahce, the Tristana would be kind of what I'm looking at there. But with an Italy, if you're not getting ahead, I feel like that's actually you getting behind is an Italy. It's kind of like when you pick that champion, you expect to be up in CS, up in gold, up in tempo. If you're not, then why pick it? You can't go even on Italy. You have to be able to continually harass your enemy exactly. jungler. If you're even, you're behind, yeah. right? Makes a lot of sense. We did see a little bit of an invade from Hong Kong Attitude, but two early wards from Fenerbahce were able to catch them out. Definitely looking towards that mid and bot lane for both these two teams. That's where the action is going to be if it happens. Want to see what Crash does now that he's been opened up with an aggressive jungle. So what happens here is Thaldrin is harassing while they do the blue buff. And then on the bottom side, it's a leash that was spotted onto Crash's blue buff. So as they enter the lane phase, Blitzcrank will get a good position. And we'll try to uh, play a little bit further up and see what he can do there. God's quiet getting half HP because he doesn't get as much of a leash. Ruiz was uh, chunked down there as well. It's actually, I believe, chunk popping through a potion to start off that lane. So he's going to struggle a little bit into Thordrin early on, but should be okay. Galio very good at wave clearing. The hook onto Panda, oh, took but it level one? the jump takes it level one to keep himself safe. Nice, I actually really like that. It doesn't give you as so much lane presence in terms of a explosive shot and like throwing the charge down to wave clear, but he doesn't want to push up. It's pattern, how can you jump in without W at level <laughs> one, so I mean? You need to be able to get that as soon as possible. Is struggling to CS a little bit in the lane, though a couple of farm down. Might be able to equalize that Slightly, but it's still that one or two CS down on his opponent unified. Yeah, but like I was saying with the pick of the Blitzcrank, it just seemed like something they wanted because it's a comfort pick and the game decider for Kai Wing. Whereas Patton already had the Tristana locked in. It's not a good matchup into the Trist because the Trist can just buffer the rocket jump. And it's pretty, pretty fairly easy to do, especially on land, uh, to just react to it coming out. So. It's not, it's more not, not for the lane phase, but more for outside of it being a game changer and getting those winning picks. Well, alongside that Blitzcrank pick, the other point we really want to focus on is Frozen in this mid lane. He's picked the Echo, he's got the counter. He has consistently been a strong carry for Fenerbahce throughout their split. Now he really needs to step up because Mission had his number in their previous matchup today. Yeah, Mission did a fantastic job up against Frozen. And we didn't see as much help kind of over from Crash, but now Crash is invading the jungle, has a level up over the Gragas. He has more tempo right now too, and he's able to place down some boards. 
can get some vision as Gragas will hit four off his camp. Pops the Scryer's Bloom as well, just to make sure that he knows if there's any vision for Hong Kong Attitude in there. What is it What is it we expect to see from Crash? Because Nidalee Jungle is still a pick that's kind of re-emerging on the scene. What is his incentive? Is it all just about the counter jungle, or is he going to be looking for ganks as well? Well, you just try to use your power and... Ooh! Actually got hooked in and took a lot of damage there. Oh, Patton chunked a half, and that's going to give him an advantage. But to answer your question about what he's looking for, you're looking for counter jungle when you can, just trying to put not so much the Gragas behind, but you ahead, and get a large enough gold advantage where you can start leveraging that. And you can see he backs, gets the Tracker's Knife as well as Yamp Tome. And so now he has some combat stats that he's going to start looking to start leveraging. And we'll see right here. Oh, that's the rocket jump. But Godquai is on the left side. Yeah, he's looking for this gank down towards the bottom side. Just going to look to push this wave in. Kawing's still 12 seconds away from another hook, but he does have the knockup and can flash in for it. Has Ignite as well. Here's Godquai, but the minions there in the nick of time to help out Fen Fenerbahce in that bottom lane. Crash also on this side. Huh? He doesn't quite make it over the wall. I was able to come down and uh, make sure that if the dive happened, he would have been there to react. It looks like Frozen is on his way towards bot as well, or just seeing if he can spot out Godquai waiting in the wings. Another hook onto Pattern, and then the heal has to be used. Not quite getting those buffers off as much as he would like on the jump. Interesting as well, because we saw uh, that Frozen went into Fog of War mid, and he had a route to come bottom lane and actually flank them. But HKA, this is something that's a criticism I had of them when I first saw them, was they play really risky. It doesn't look risky because they don't get punished, but they play with very little vision in a lot of places, especially around mid. And that's where I thought Fenerbahce would actually beat them, was just their control of that area. They still have the vision control around that. They've got a, a ward pushed up a little bit. Padden able to jump away this time. But I haven't quite seen either team take a, a true advantage yet. Getting the heal out of Japan is important. It is Barrio and Padden and heal on Japan, which is something we're seeing a lot more on these ardent sensor supports. Top lane is a, a little bit of a handbag war, as we would call it in the UK. Just hitting each other over the head with handbags, not really doing too much damage on either side. Does look like Thaldron is getting a bit low off of the uh, the handbag fight. Right now, though, he doesn't have priority in that top side, and that gives Crash an opportunity to go top after he wards here and possibly open it up. Because you can see both junglers actually mirroring each other. Had an aware of the imminent danger from Kawing. They are 10 CS, 13 CS down in that lane now, and they were looking for the back, but here comes Crash up towards the top side. We might see our first gank of the game, and as I say that, or not. Uh, able to spot it out and just backs away. Yep, just back to farming. Up time, up time. Aldrin, too low. It wouldn't be a Fenerbahce game versus Hong Kong attitude unless it had a slow early start for us, as I mean. True. These two teams like to slowly accelerate towards a mid-game crash against each other. A clash of titans, you might call it. Blue buff is what's looking over here for these titans. Crash will be able to take this pretty quickly. Uh, the Gragas was on the bottom side. They'll actually spot him on that control ward as soon as he heads over towards that area. Do Fenerbahce react to this? Do they engage or do they just say, okay, we know that he's coming. He's stolen that away. We see Japon is in the mid lane trying to help out Frozen a little bit. He can oh, maybe steal, but we'll see. I feel like, yeah, I feel like this is just too risky to get over there. They're too far away as well. But they do have awareness of that, and that's always important. It's, it's not always about stopping the enemy from doing something. It's just about knowing that they are doing it. This is going to be an awkward situation here because this is actually a long lane where the wave is. It's actually not going to meet in the halfway point, it'll be a little bit on HKA's side. And I don't know if they're like waiting and hoping that Blast Cone comes up in a few seconds here, because you can see the plant particle, so it's almost up. Uh, but they're just hanging around this area and Crash, now spotted. Kai Wing slowed up with the Glitter Lance, the ward comes down. Blast Cone yet to fully germinate in that bottom lane. But there's a Mountain Drake on the cards. Teams still very even 
early on in this portion of the matchup and perhaps a little bit of passivity due to the importance of the game as well. It is for a first seed spot. It is for an easier elimination match in a couple of oh. days. Kind of corruption. Huh? Hook. Kawing's gonna land it. Pattern knocked back with the explosive cast. What a superb combo. But Pattern with the barrier flash isn't gonna quite be able to get away. Unified flashes in for the kill. A fantastic flash forward from Unified. This guy has been so clutch for Hong Kong Attitude all tournament long. That was fantastic. The ultimate, it got buffered. Didn't matter. The Blitzcrank pick paid off in spades with the hook, and then Gogwai was right there to channel or chain the CC together, even though the flash comes through as well as the barrier. That explosive cast was absolutely clutch as well. Superb play all around from Hong Kong Attitude and taking an early lead in a lane, burning the flash on the Tristana, burning the heel on Japone, burning the barrier as well is so instrumental to help Hong Kong Attitude get a lead early on. Frozen was unable to roam down. He's going to jump onto Mission, try to trade in. Parallel Convergence is there as well, but Mission will dodge to the side. The shield comes out. Mission might actually want to turn this one back around, does not unleash the power of hell on Frozen's face. Wow, okay. <laughs> that escalated. This demonic Syndra. That would be such a sweet. That would be sick. Wouldn't it? That would be sick. Frozen though, hanging around here. TP from Riri's. Yeah, it's gonna join the fight. Perhaps it's gonna be a smite fight. Thordrin might have been thought he was a little bit closer. Is this is what? Fight? As you say, the knockback, but the smite goes down. Crash secures it. Dies straight away. Fenerbahce valuing the Mountain Drake more than their jungle as well. That was a, that was a lot of uh, confusion there. The Mountain Drake more than the Nidalee, so she'll lose tempo in the jungle. We'll see this one more time here. The unified ulti into Kaiwing jumping forward. And then the barrel, so well played there. Barrier comes out, but then the ignite was down. They used the summoner spells appropriately. And the ultimate there to knock back the Gragas. I mean, you pretty much try to play that as best you can. Frozen, now on the bottom side, it has the wave clear, so God quite doesn't want to go in immediately in. And he's going to hold this. Decided to finish the TP as well, because if they do dive in on him, he can always chrono break all the way back to the base, and we'll be safe for the time being. Mid-priority given over to Mission, who has a 10 CS advantage as well. Yeah, speaking of CS advantage, though, Patton Unified. Uh, it's almost 50. He's almost got double it. He's heading over there. And this is that Varus into the uh, Tristana matchup, but at the same time, Kaiwing is constantly hooking, right? And so when you're constantly hooking on this Blitz Crank, there's sometimes a three-second gap, because he's maxing it first, where the Rocket Grab will keep going down in cooldown, whereas the Rocket Jump stays at that 22-second cooldown. So there's three-second gaps, four-second gaps, constantly. And now you have to worry about this Varus also throwing the ulti as well. Chain of Corruption, there's the boot. Wild God comes out at the start, but Pattern caught out, taken huh. down, Kaiwing! With the ultimate, secures another kill for HKA, and it's the bottom lane of Fenerbahce that's struggling once again. Yeah, and this is what we were saying is, when coming into the tournament, this was not a very convincing bottom lane. And then they kept having these fantastic performances, the Kog'Maw, the 10 kills, the Pentakill, insane from them. And now it's being exploited. Godquai even steals away the Grump. Crash has not been able to have the early pressure that he wanted on this Nidalee, and this Blitzcrank pick, the aggressive pick from HKA, is working out so well. First tower blood in bot as well. Look at it, 11 minutes in, Zyrene, there is a 3,000 gold difference between these teams. It's the biggest advantage we have seen in any game between these two matchups. Exactly, and the fact that Fenerbahce is not even getting on the board right now, they're looking for those later parts of the game, the 1-3-1, one, when they can actually have those matchups go their way. This is not going their way at all. It's the pressure. The Blitzcrank they had banned previously, they let up. They were like, we have to ban Kogma Callista in this phase. And then they let the Blitz crank through, and that ended up being something big for Kaiwing, where he's got 100% KP. He's the one hooking everybody in, getting those kills and setting his team up. The clutch ace in the hole pick here. A third seed from LMS, showing why many people rated them above AHQ coming into this tournament, showing just how strong they can be when they are able to get these early leads. A Blade of the Ruin King already finished on towards Unified. He's even gone for the Ninja Tarby just to negate the damage coming out from Padden. And with that 50 farm lead, they can now roam around the map a little bit more. They've come towards top lane. It has been answered by Fenerbahce, but they are probably going to struggle in this 2v2 still. Yeah, this Tristan is pretty much a glorified cannon minion at this point. Uh, running around, no flash, hoping to not get picked off, but they're just going to keep trying. Unified, once again, has the ultimate. Crash is rushing towards the top side. Uh. 
think, I think that's the noise that a lot of Fenerbahce fans were making with that. Uh, yeah. Push oh. Going straight to Godwai Kawing. The knockback static view. He does survive. Oh, we got and lands though. They're not quite going to get the kill onto him. And meanwhile, the Nature's Grass is going to come out looking for the flank because Frozen is fighting mission down towards the bottom side of this. Nature's Grass lands, but only on towards Godquai. He's knocked back. The body slam got him away. Echo's Echo flanking. Has got the Cinder away, and now the flank comes out. Patton jumping in, jumping forward onto Unified. A kill onto the Lulu, but here comes Frozen, and this is the mid laner that needed to carry Fenerbahce. The pick that was left for him, the counter pick oh. of this Echo. A great scatter of the week for mission, but Frozen is not done. He freezes Kai Wing in place and gets the kill for Fenerbahce. And meanwhile, Rivius didn't have teleport. It's only 10 seconds away at the end of that fight. Didn't get in range to use the ultimate, decided to keep pushing, and that gets Fenerbahce back in the game. Gold onto Frozen, much needed gold onto Padden, and now Crash also picked up some himself. Still a two and a half thousand gold lead for Hong Kong attitude, though. It was an overpush. They thought they could catch out Crash. They thought they could over get the push kill. Again. And once again, Virus has overpushed a little bit in the bottom lane. He's looking for this tower. It does have the hero's entrance, of course. Soldier needs to try and lock him up if he uses that. The knockback with the justice punch, but I think Virus is just trying to execute to the tower. Nobody Crash spots. has now gone the other way. And here it comes the shield of Duran from Virus to try and keep himself alive as well. He cannot hear his entrance, as you say, because there's no one in range. So he's just trying to delay for as long as possible. Good justice punch into the flash. Crash with the chair. Chase. Crash still going. He can use that bush, of course, for the movement speed. Rivis realizes it. And Crash secures his second kill of the game. God quiet, bro, where you at? He was doing like red buff the whole time. <laughs> Come on. Doesn't even like move to help him out or anything. It's like not worth my time, not worth the risk, not even let him let him try. But this crash barely getting away is huge. Because he's gonna be able to uh, contribute some spears here. And then the one-on-one -on -one that happens actually is the Echo forcing away the Syndra. They both ulti, and then the Echo has the inside track. Crash goes forward, but they are able to kill God quite first. And then it was just CC and the damage from Padden. Now it's not much, but it was enough there to help them get those kills. Important that Frozen didn't actually get either of those two kills. He was just able to get the assist, so he hasn't snowballed as much as perhaps he could do. But he's still jumping in. Chrono Breaks back, doesn't quite steal it away. Was looking for the eye of the Herald there to get a steal. Yeah, looking to hit that. You usually can hit it around 1900 or 2000 HP. It won't open after that point, but that's usually the sweet spot. <laughs> that's a CS deficit right there. Minus 61 farm at 15 for Padden. That probably would have been even more if that fight hadn't happened in the top lane and he got a couple of waves. Oh, another road chain into hook, into knockback. Explosive cask, explosive kill. Explosive early game here from Hong Kong Attitude. I mean, sure, you have flash, you have barrier, you have ulti. It doesn't matter. Patton's just gonna get rocked. But Fenerbahce can still play around this mid lane. The Nature's Grasp onto Mission does have the flash, but realizes there's nowhere to go. Once again, Thaldrin gets the kill, and Frozen will be thinking, if only I had a couple more of these, I could get my Lich Bain, I could do a little bit more. Yeah, Frozen has been doing a really good job of setting this mid lane up, but also Thaldrin. I feel like Thaldrin's the one with those flanks. Every time he's on this Maokai and he gets some of those early, it really helps open up Frozen. So when they get to play around him, and allow him to 1-3-1 one, one on something like this Echo and with the TP. It looks a lot better for him, but what doesn't look good, two-level advantage bot for Hong Kong Attitude, and the fact that this is a 70 CS differ differential now in favor of Unified. I think this is the game that shows us how strong Ardent Sensor can be, because you've got a Lulu with Ardent Sensor, and you've got a Blitzcrank who cannot build Ardent Sensor. Which is stronger is the question, a 70 CS advantage or an Ardent Sensor on your support? Uh, well, that's actually a really good question because the combat stats that it would give you, people say, you know, it's worth a ton of gold. But it doesn't have much to back it up yet. You still need to have damage to be able to utilize the extra attack speed. So mm -hmm. we'll have to wait and see how effective it is. Rift Herald is used mid lane. by a Godquai towards that mid lane, looking for the turret. It will be the fourth of the game for Hong Kong Attitude if they're able to secure it. Fenerbahce yet to get a tower of their own. But Here comes the hero's entrance, and Kai Wings got caught out. There's Crash, jumps back. Here comes the Paolo Convergence, though, and that was absolutely devastating as Fenerbahce looked to turn the fight around. Hong Kong Attitude need to retreat through the jungle, but Godquai's not quite done yet. Unified pounding down as well as the turret goes lower and lower. The nature Grass. Fenerbahce unwilling, unending, unceasing in their aggression as they push forward, but they will be able to defend the tower for the time being. Meanwhile, Hong Kong Attitude realizing their mistake as they went for that pick immediately backed away. And now the wave clear will come through from the Syndra. She has enough mana as well as the Galio. And Thaldrin, does he TP in? What happens here? Have they got the flank wards? Yes, there it is. they have. TP to the top side. No nature oh, cross. Oh, away from the hook! 
That's not what you want to happen. Anti-synergy from the team there. Explosive car, scatter the weak. The hook just slides by the Tristana. That's the first time, though. That's the first time that's happened. With the TP coming from the side, Thaldrum doesn't make it in either, and that's his TP down. But now Patton, he's talking about him padding his stats. It's going the opposite this game. This game, he is just going into everybody else's score boxes. That's one time he slips away. The important thing about that TP is that Frozen has one of his own, so you can match side lane pressure with double TP. If you fall behind, you can still match this Galio pushing in a side lane. Once again, Crash being aggressive does have a 40 CS advantage, does have a slight experience advantage as well. So this early game, Nidalee has kept ever so slightly ahead, and it looks like he's going towards the Athenes on Holy Grail next. Yeah, Athenes on Holy Grail, potentially Ardent Sensor as well on him. We'll see what happens. Do you want to build Ardent Sensor when your AD carry is doing poorly is the question, really. Yeah. I don't, but Art and Sensor is such a good item anyway. Maybe you give it to the uh, the Echo. You can get those passive stacks faster. Get those three stacks without having to land two Qs. Who knows? Gain the life back as well. Can, de can definitely work. On Frozen mission. to try and parallel convergence onto mission who has to flash away, but Frozen unwilling to give up the chase. The knockback. Frozen still has the chrono break. Unleash power. Chrono break back. Frozen, that's what you expect to see in this sort of trade. But Kai Wing and Unified are expecting to see a little bit more. The hook doesn't connect. Frozen puts down the parallel convergence to keep himself safe and will escape. Yeah, that's a TP to mid lane as well. They were trying to siege that turret because there's so many people pulled down to the bot side. But Frozen didn't get enough HP back from his ultimate because he dropped into Morello Namicon range, had Grievous Wounds on, and so he didn't actually get that much so he could stand and fight afterwards. Ocean Drake is going to go over to HKA, helps them out because you get all of that extra mana and health regen, of course. Still a 3,000 gold lead for them. If before the game you offered them a 3,000 gold lead at 20 minutes, I'm sure they would have bitten your hand off. So they'll be comfortable in this position, if not happy with how the last couple of minutes have gone. I mean, I'd be very happy in this position. I have a Varus with two completed items versus a Tristana that has zero completed items. That's a very good position to be in, a very good position. And now you're going to see item picked up on the rest of the champions as well. You've got a Righteous Glory just finished onto Rivis. You've got the Abyssal Mask on the Cauldron in the top lane. Almost a Lich Bane for Frozen as he's got the Sheen and the Aether Wisp. And it looks like Mission is going towards that Void Staff early on that we've seen from him before. Yeah, it's pretty good against tanks, especially with an Abyssal Mask. And then there's the Athenes, which will also be in there too. He just wants that extra power. Especially since, like you said before, Merc Treads is a very incredibly common item in the mid lane. People buy it almost like almost like we see AD carries buying their their boots very early on. You buy the Merc Treads to negate some of the damage from your lane opponent in magic damage matchups. Uh, and also, if they have pretty much any CC, it helps a lot. So a lot of teams, mid lane players, actually moved away from just stacking the penetration. Baron has spawned 21 minutes into the game. and. You can see once again, these two teams value so much vision around Baron. It's all that happens really in the mid to late game between the two. That mid lane tower sitting, but a breath of wind away from dying. Poof, goes unified and down goes the tower. Yeah, Hong Kong attitude got upset by Fenerbahce in the day one. Turned it around, said, you know what? It's an upset, but they can remedy it. And if they come out on top again, they just go, everything is all right in the world. All the number one seeds ended up being number one coming out of the group. Fenerbahce, now their back's against the wall right now. 4,000 gold down, and it's a very proactive Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank always effective with those hooks later on as well. Assuming you can hit one, you can just draw the enemy team totally out of position. And Fenerbahce are just so much on the back foot here. They're giving up ground. They're seeding their jungle. They're saying, okay, Hong Kong Attitude, we're willing to accept that you are ahead at the moment. We need Padden to get an Infinity Edge before we can really do too much. Currently sitting only on that static ship. We need just that little bit more item spikes. Last time these two teams met, that's basically all we talked about for about 10 minutes, just saying they're waiting on their next item. They're waiting on the power, on the vision control. And that is exactly what we're seeing here between these two teams that respect each other so greatly. A lot of it came down to team fighting around Padden for the win for Fenerbahce, and then for Hong Kong Attitude, it came down to team fighting around Unified. And now we find them in completely opposite positions now. With Unified, that two levels up, 
It almost feels like we're watching that uh, Fnatic game over again with Reckless two, two levels down in this matchup. Just we're seeing this Varus be an answer to this Tristana that's been so prevalent lately. You have to give credit to Koeing as well. Consistently landing oh, hooks yeah. in the lane, consistently burning that jump away as well. And you could tell their practice on this because this Blitzcrank, if somebody just whips it out for like the first time or like, you know, they're like, I'm really good at this champion. This just seems like something the team plays around a whole bunch because if he's throwing those hooks on cooldown, you have to understand that window with alongside Unified's Varus, if this is the combo you're going to run. And Godquai was even getting in there with the explosive casks. So Tristana, normally a good matchup into the Blitzcrank, but they're changing that with the fact they have multiple CCs in that lane. And the synergy with Godquai's explosive cast is absolutely dominating as well. On the other side of the rift, Crash has sometimes struggled to synergize with his Venabache lineup. He is, of course, an emergency sub replacing move for them, and they've had a little time to adjust to him. Over the games, he seemed to be more in a cohesive setting with the team, using Frozen, helping Frozen in that mid lane here. He does still have an advantage over Godquai, but I want to see just that little bit more. I want to see him just do that a little bit more for this team. And it looks like he's actually moving away from the Ardent Sensor and instead going for a Sheen of his own here. A Lich Bane, yeah. So Lich Bane combined with the Runic Echoes. Help him out a bunch. We'll have to see, though, because there isn't much here. Hold on. There's, There's the hook. hook. Onto Crash, he just used the leap as well. Ignite comes down with a heal into another heal from Japone, who steps forward and polymorphs, and Crash gets out. Unified flashed the wall to try and get that. You could see Hong Kong Attitude playing around Vision once again. They wanted him so badly, but that's his flash. That's the heal from Japone. And now, what's going to happen here with the picks? There's just so much you can do in terms of picking. Frozen. Chrono breaks back, that's an ultimate use, and that means the under oh. power can be more effective now. You can see HK are picking at the weak points of Fenerbahce. I feel like one of those sweepers, I feel like Frozen, you gotta change that over to another trinket. We need more vision on the side of Fenerbahce if they want to contest this, because it's a Blitzcrank. He's gonna hook people like over the wall here. It's gonna be, oh boy. I mean, there are two stacks on the tracker's knife. There were three stacks on the sight stone. But the control ward but control even, from Hong Kong. But even walking up to place those is sometimes just too far. God Kwai is going to be able to get the engaged. Doldrin is able to use the twisted advance. Frozen looking for the flank. Of course, doesn't have that ultimate. Still on cooldown. The engage from God Kwai, the knockback. And they're looking oh. through Japone. They take him down. Pattern with the kickback. Frozen trying to get on the backside of HKA as Crash pounds down from the side. But they cannot get the damage in. And Fenerbahce just have to accept that they have lost their support for the next 22 seconds. Yep, and there's three seconds on this Mountain Drake here, so they could even those up. Frozen, though, just kind of playing off on the side. Mid lane will be cleared out. A Mountain Drake for HKA helps all that chip damage just get multiplied on towers on the Baron as well. You can see Fenerbahce using the time to try and get some vision control, but look at that red side vision yeah. for HKA. Right now, HKA, they would want to go bottom and clear that wave, but they want to clear mid now and try to push that up. And, Cra and Crash just went in top, and he's pushing that out. So they're in a position where they have to run across the map and try to equalize. Still control wards sitting in the Fenerbahce jungle. Viris has gone down towards the bottom lane to try and push up that wave. No turrets remain in that lane. Mission. Sitting at 234 farm, 26 minutes in, is looking pretty strong. Finish the void stuff now. But that CS differential between the AD carries is shrinking slowly here, Zyrene. It's Down to shrinking. about 40. Shrinking, but in actuality, that is a 2,400 gold difference between the two of them. That's basically a full item. There is an item sensor. Absolutely, yeah. that's the balance we have to strike. There's still 1,500 between the two supports as well. Mid lane a lot more even, only about 1,000 gold there. So that's a, a 4,000 advantage for HKA across the board. And now we have to see if they're able to take the impetus, if they're able to take that next step, the game winning step, perhaps the group's winning step, that gets you in to those groups against the top teams in the world. Avoid Cloud9, avoid Team WE, avoid Fnatic, and play against Lion, Young Generation, or Team One Esports. It's definitely a, re a big reward for winning the group here. It's a much easier matchup in terms of what we've seen from all of these teams. And there's the item differential in AD carry really showing. Ginsu's Rage Raid has been completed for Unified and only a zeal on the side of Padden. They can shred through this Baron if they want. They have the vision control.
They have the deep wards. They're looking perhaps for just a little bit more awareness of Fenerbahce before HKA really pulled the trigger. Ah, you see, Frozen, he did it. He swapped his trinket out. I was like, no way is that sweeper going to help you. You need this long range vision. So swaps it out. I'm glad he did that. And I mean, he's on a Syndra counter, but he's not really on a Galio counter in this Echo. He can't trade that effectively nope. if he's pushing into a Galio in the side lane. Thaldrin is having to deal with the top lane, the hook not quite connecting onto that Maokai. He was blended into the jungle. I think that was blind too. He just walked up and then walked back. So everywhere that they go, they're just walking and then walking back. Like they're juking as if somebody would be in there. That's what they have to do because they have no vision control, no control really of their jungle at all. Only one deep ward up towards that top side, and that's it. Oh, here comes Thaldrin trying to make the play. Nature's Grasp in. They know Rivis is on the other side of the map, does have the teleport. Look for the hero's entrance as well. They're not back onto Frozen as he jumps in, and there's Thaldrin going low. The damage down onto that tree oh. is monumental, and the unleashed power takes him down. Yelling Timber, HKA, kill at the top lane of Fenerbahce. Yeah, and Rivis TP'd in, so he's also here. He's going to jump forward, he's flashed. Not going to find anything. Righteous Glory into the Shield of Duran, which slows you down. Perhaps not the best combo in the world, but they can't, weren't quite able to get the engage they wanted. They haven't pulled the trigger on the Baron, and meanwhile, Padden is pulling the trigger in this mid lane. This will be the first turret for Fenerbahce, and it's just a, kind of a sign of, no, they're not completely out of it just yet in terms of they'll find something on the map, but it's still a 5,000 gold advantage for Hong Kong Attitude, who have been showing all tournament long. Uh, you know, we said they were the weakest pool one seed coming in, but oh, it looks like that was just a hiccup on the first day as they take this advantage early. Do you still have to close out the game? 5,000 gold up from 3,000 gold 10 minutes ago, but it's a much slower development than HKA would like. And you do have double TP on Fenerbahce. We've seen how devastating that can be in the Fnatic match that we watched just a few moments ago. Yeah, and that's why when you asked me about who has the advantage late game, I did have to kind of mull it over. I feel like HKA just have the Blitzcrank, which is just such a damn game changer with all the vision. But the double teleport is really what Fenerbahce have going for them. Uh, this TP, we just saw them get two turrets for the first time in this game and start getting a little bit back. It's not a lot, but the fact they have a Mountain Drake as well will help in that split push with the Echo who now also has a Zonia's Hourglass. So we're just seeing some turret destruction here uh, on the side of Fenerbahce. If they reach these turrets, they'll be able to take them out. But three items on Tristana, three items on the uh, AD carry of Unified. Look for a Hex Drinker too. Hmm. Summoners up across the board as well. Only Thaldrin's Flash down in this game. So ability to dodge Kewing's Blitzcrank, but those hooks are coming out thick and fast. As are the Spears from Crash, who has had a pretty strong game on this mid lane. Yeah, I yeah. feel like we're at the point now where this Tristana, she's fine. Ardent Sensor, three items. You have your Energizer build. They're good to fight. And that's what's going to come down to. Nature's Gas comes out. God quite forced off towards the side. Kawing is going to get caught by that. And Thaldrin doesn't want the Blitzcrank. Wants Unified instead. Goes in. Here's the hero's entrance. Kawing flashes it. Out. Explosive cast not enough. Frozen doing work. But here comes the damage as Crash gets locked out at the backside. Ruiz in the front line. The stun lands. But Fenerbahce having to run for the heels as Patton jumps the wall. And HKA have killed the tank once again. And you're seeing this Galio be huge. The damage reduction keeping Kai Wing alive. And then also Thaldrin. Not really going really deep for Unified. Decides, no, I'm gonna go after Kai Wing. He's the one who's right there. But it just makes it so hard to actually pick him up with that damage reduction from the Galio. It's uh, pretty dis pretty disgusting. It's kind of why they picked it early. Teleporting by Frozen up towards the top side. He actually might get caught out a little bit here. Puts the parallel conversions down. Knows Ruiz doesn't have the shield of Dread. It's now back up as he jumps in. Does land the taunt. God quite there as well with Kawing. And there comes the static field. The Zonia's used by Frozen. He does not have the Chrono Bank. He's trying to get out. Flashes the wall. And actually, Mission just died to Pattern. He was caught out from the rest of his team. And now Frozen has the ult as well. Yeah. Parallel conversions is going to come out. He's gonna jump back. There we go. Double kill as he jumps all the way in. The teleport coming out already, but Frozen the damage. Out. Unified goes down as he takes out Crash. Unified somehow survives. It's up to Patton. He's on the back line. He's gonna jump forward. I can sense it. Do it, Patton. Be a man as he jumps all the way. Onto oh, God, quite the righteous glory slow comes out. And Fanabache are turning this one all the, all the way back around the nature's grasp. It's already connected on God, quite. He's gonna jump up towards the side, but Thaldrin is there. They're not gonna be able to get oh the chase off any further. And Fanabache oh. and KA disengaged. That ulti actually hit Unified. They didn't know where he was, but it rooted him for two, like, two and a half seconds. That was so close. But like you were saying, 
Patton, this guy, he likes to go forward. If he's freed up, I love to call this guy Wild Turkey. Just like Wild Turtle, he gets forward. He will be aggressive if he sees the opportunity. Sometimes it bites him, but it's just so lovely to watch. And the fact that he was put down early in this game means you haven't been able to see it until that moment. And that's where you really just go, man, this team, they are just playing on a knife's edge. Right here, Frozen, he's drawing so much damage, so much attention, the Zonias, and then as soon as he gets the E, flashes over, he's out, his ulti's back up, but they blew up mission on this side with the flank because everybody was paying attention to what was going on with Frozen. And then Frozen has time to get his ultimate back up. The teleport comes in, he does get taken out. Crash gets removed from the fray as well. And then Patton just has a bit of time to work his magic on this Tristana. But you saw how much damage Unified was doing. We see a lot of on-hit builds and we go, ah, they don't matter that much. But he had the full stack Rage Blade and the Rune Ant's Hurricane, and he was doing so much. It looked like maybe the Galio Q came in and you're like, that's a lot of damage just hitting everybody. But it was really Unified. Baldrin though, taking a bit. Pops in Nature's Grasp, but it's going the wrong way as HKA continues to look for the engage. Patton is sitting at four completed items now, so he is doing a lot of work on this Tristano if he can position properly. It's still a 3,000 gold lead for HKA. That fight set them back earlier on, but they are still in a strong position in this game. They can still set up vision. They can still play the way that they were playing before. They just need to be a little bit more cautious with their engages. And they did get a Mountain Drake as we were seeing those replays. So that double Mountain Ocean here to only the single Mountain of Fenerbahce. The next Dragon will be the Elder. We've seen so many times the games between these two teams come up to a Baron steal or a Baron fight or an Elder fight. Both of these teams so anxious, so willing, so ready to fight for this number one seed because of just how important it is to avoid Fnatic, to avoid Cloud9, to avoid Team WE yeah. and make their way towards groups. Baron is going to be really hard here. There would have to be a Blitzcrank hook to try and stop this. There comes the, there comes the Trinket. Frozen's off on the side. This is all a setup. They're doing it slowly. Patton, though, taking a lot of damage. Yeah, back of the pimp means you take more damage. God cry, perhaps looking for engage. They don't know that Frozen is there. Mirrors to oh, the mid lane, was... has the hero's entrance. Knock back, Frozen jumps into oh, mission. The, the parallel conversions comes out as well in the hero's entrance, but the spear from downtown kills mission. And now Fenerbahce looking for the fight. Oh, Unified my... down, two kills already, and Fenerbahce can jump forward. You can see Patton can taste it. You can see Frozen can taste it. And you can see HKA taste the face of Fenerbahce. Bache, they're going to lose four members, and Fenerbahce are going to go for the Baron. They're going to go on the Baron. It's only God Quiet alive. Frozen is a god. That setup with the parallel convergence and then the ultimate afterwards. We were talking about Patton needing to get back in this game. Frozen has been keeping him alive on life support. This is beautiful. This right here, the setup. He's been waiting in this bush. The explosive cast comes out, doesn't matter. Thaldron goes in, they only think he's there. He already prepped this on the mission. He stuns mission and unified the two carries and he obliterates one with the help of Crash, the old Longju member, the duo. That was an insane combination there. We've said it through the entirety of planes. Frozen needs to step up. That is what your key member does. That is what your carry does when it comes down to the crunch. Fenerbahce now equalize the goal. They're even a thousand ahead. Look at the damage from Frozen. Over 6,000 compared to only 300 for Mission. Mission didn't even get a chance to get its ultimate off in that fight. Yeah, the stun and then the fact that Crash was there to throw into the back line. There's so much going in favor of Fenerbahce now. The gold advantage, the fact that they have the double TP, and the fact that Frozen has that counter matchup into the Syndra. He was applying pressure in the lane after a bit, but he's been applying pressure across the map now. And because they were pushed back early on, there are so many turrets that they have yet to take. Standing gold on the map for them that can help them push this gold lead. Now they're looking at this second tier of towers. Still one tower behind HKA. Do still have three dragons, remember. But it's all on what Fenerbahce can do with the next two and a half minutes while they have this Baron buff. Well, 1-3-1 one, one compositions make the best use out of Baron. They'll siege bot, they'll siege mid, and Frozen saying, there's a wave top. I'm a siege top with his double teleport. 
and you're getting to the point where HKA's early game doesn't matter. You've got a four-item Tristana. You've got the Ardent Sensor there as well. You've got a massive Echo in the mid lane. Thaldrin's incredibly tanky. You've got a second AP carry in the form of Crash. Keep going, keep you going. Are, <laughs> there's so many benefits for Fenerbahce. HKA reeling from a fight that they lost and now losing tower after tower after tower. And now they hit those six items a little bit faster, but it just gets them back to even now. Ah, this is, this comes down to those summoner spells, the compositions, the team fights right now with that Baron buff on Fenerbahce. The one, three, one is not answered. There's a one, four going on right now. And Thaldrin is able to push the bottom side as the top side is just being answered by Galio. So now it's just back and forth, back and forth, trying to find something. And if you're Hong Kong Attitude, you're looking for a little bit of that magic. You're looking for a bit of the magic that Tabe brought you when he joined the team. You're looking for God Kwai or Mission or Unified just to step up and make that big play. Yeah, let's update this real quick because we're talking about magic. This Tristana was just getting destroyed. Hold on. No, oh my but, oh, he God. survives though. That could be huge because the hero's edge comes out first instead. That's a little bit of magic in the Hong Kong attitude of the Hong Kong assassins as they have killed Frozen and Crash. Thaldrin now in the wrong place. Unified just Healing. unleashing hell upon Thaldrin. And Thaldrin has to flash away, but you don't get away from HKA as they take three kills in the mid lane. And on the opposite, another brilliant fight there. We saw Frozen try to have lightning strike twice. He gets unified but all of the shields come through. It's like, where is that coming from? He had the maw pop, he had the healing come through, and he had the defense from Riri's. Incredibly, he survives that and heals back up. Frozen did not get to ulti, did not get to Zonia's, and now they're pushing down the main base of Fenerbahce. How quickly the tides can turn. Fenerbahce still 30 seconds on their top lane, a 15 on Frozen as well. This will be an inhibitor at least. HKA, they though, they want look that one like seed. they want the win. It's just a Nexus Tower between them and the win, but Padden is on the flank, and HKA accept that they shouldn't push any further. They back away from it. The gold is even now, Zyrene. The game is even, but HKA have an inhibitor advantage. Well, HKA have an inhibitor advantage, and they have five seconds before Thaldrin's up with no teleport. This gives them a lot of time to do this Elder Dragon, if they're confident enough, rush it down, because Fenerbahce are gonna have to face check. Spears come out, as do the traps. HKA second, setting up a trap of their own in the river. No vision control. Crash jumps the wall what straight the? into... Oh, the hook lands as well, but the knockback from the scatter of the wheat, and Japone actually escapes, and HKA actually save the support of Benabache with a scatter of the wheat for Mission. But they that doesn't matter too much, because Mission got chunked out. He may have to back here 4v5 in favor of Fenerbahce. On his way is Frozen, still looking for the Fang. Doldrin in the front line, onto Godquai. Frozen up towards the top side, but Rivis checks the bush. 4,000 HP on that God Elder Dragon. The steal from Godquai perhaps could happen, but he's going to actually back away from this. HKA decide they do not want this fight. The Elder Drake will go down, and Fenerbahce, with their second big objective of the game, might be able to force HKA into that second seat. And this will barely overlap for them with when the, Eld when the Baron spawns here in two minutes. So this Elder Dragon will be on for a little bit of that time, but they're gonna try to shove down mid, get this turret that they had already worked on before, and try to get something in that base because they lost that inhibitor mid. Let's quickly recap where we are in this game. 3,000 gold between the two teams. That means nothing now. It's minuscule. But we are hitting those five item spikes. We are hitting those six item points. Four items completed onto mission. You've got four as well onto Frozen. And this is the reason that HKA were able to get that inhib in mid. Yeah, watch this counter. The damage reduction keeps them alive. Unified turns, roots as the stun comes through, or the knockup comes through. He doesn't get to do anything to get out of that. And now Unified heals up with the fact that he is the Blade of the Ruined King and the fully stacked up Rage Blade and the Maw had popped, which gives him even more. That lifeline passive from the Maw gives you both the shield and lifesteal, 10% extra when it pops. That is absolutely devastating in a fight like that. And look at that gold graph, the swings and roundabouts that have happened in this game, the peaks for HKA and the troughs for Fenerbahce. And both these teams are playing like they deserve a number one seed in Group D. Well, the sad fact is that you can only have one.
Right, it's a Highlander situation. That's why it's Worlds. That's why these are the best teams in the world. That's why this competition means so much, especially to emerging reasons, especially to the third seed from LMS. The first time we've had a third seed, a Turkish representative from Fenerbahce. They are fighting for the pride, not only of their team, but of their country and of their region. That's one of the reasons I love to watch esports as well. These teams, there can only be one winner out of this group, only one team taking the glory. And when it's this close, that's how close you get to the screen. Every move under a microscope, seeing who is gonna make that clutch play. And both these teams have people who can do it. We've seen Mission do it. We've seen Unified make superb plays, Frozen, Crash, just to list off a few. It's important to remember the team that loses this is not out of the competition. They just have a second seed into the elimin elimination matches in two days' time. It means they will face Fnatic or C9 or Team WE. I'm sure they'll be thankful that they don't face their opponents at the moment again because these games have been absolutely epic. 43 minutes in, there is not a hair's breadth between the two, but Godquai engages, flashes onto Japone, catches them out. The Unleashed Power was not there. That's what he wanted. He wanted Mission to get that engage. Godquai now without a flash, without an ult, and perhaps without a hope to fight around this barren pit that Fenerbahce are going to try and secure. Yeah, Frozen going to continue to push bottom and set up the next moment in this game. Fenerbahce are just watching mid, warding up Baron. They have control of that area, and then they have the split push bottom. This is the 1-3-1. One, one. Where's that Maokai going to go? Because now you see the Galio having to go bottom. And this is the reason that 1-3-1 one, one can be so hard to play against later on in the game. You put Maokai top here, you push it out. The good thing for HKA is the fight is around the Baron. The fight is on the top side of the map, so you can send your TP bot and help him trade into Frozen, who is struggling in that the Barmy Cinder doing work. The fact that Ruiz just has so much damage inherently in his kit and so much tankiness to deal with Frozen definitely works in their favor as well. Frozen has now completed that Rabadon's death cap, so he is basically full build, unless he's looking to sell his Mercury Treads and has been stopped. HKA not gonna quite pull the trigger on the other side of the map yet, but that's the sort of opportunity they need to catch out Fenerbahce. And you can see Frozen doesn't do much damage at all to the Galio, he has some MR, two and a half items right now. And this right here, damage dealt in the game. Unified, you shut him down, that's a huge chunk, but you can see on Fenerbahce, just across the board, everybody kind of doing the same. But the best part is this Maokai's done the most. <laughs> that's pretty impressive, actually. Didn't yeah, a lot, a lot of that is, you know, you're in a tank matchup going back and forth, but this fact that he's able to get access to things like the Blitzcrank and deal a lot of damage, as well as, you know, we've seen him on top of Godquai. The thing is, though, Patton's done an, a reasonable amount of damage with boots. Now he no longer has boots. He has a Phantom Dancer instead and is looking towards that six item Tristana, which can be devastating. We've seen it win a few times across the course of this game. I'm also going to just comment quickly on the fact that Patton has reversed that CS differential. Yeah. It doesn't really matter that much. No, early point. game doesn't matter. Ma what matters is your moves. What you do right now. 5,000, it goes down so fast with the double mountain. Frozen nope. TP's in, here's the nature's graph. Crash, Crash in. Jackson, he steals the Baron, and now HKA need to win this fight because otherwise they've lost the game. Hong Kong, Attitude looking for the kill. Dordrin has four man stun though, with the power of convergence. Frozen's in the front line, Dordrin still tanking stuff up. Here comes Patton, jumping in from the side. Kawing, caps are away, in. jumps in. Frozen has to jump out, Dordrin is there though, and Unified Wild dead. Turkey. And now it's all on Patton. He manages to secure two, that three for him, and that is gonna be the number one seed for Fenerbahce. Padden gets the recess, jumps forward, but the steal from Crash means that even if that doesn't go their way, they would have been able to stall, they would have been able to stay in this game, and now they're just gonna take it like you said. Rivis has to try and defend, but I think it's just gonna be last chance saloon for him. This inhibitor tower will fall so quickly, the inhibitor will go down as well, and Rivis might meet the same fate. Fenerbahce don't care about the Galio, but they should care about the minions, because those reduce the Nexus Tower's resistances. Patton is gonna pound down on it. 18 seconds on the next member of HKA. Doldrin's so tanky, will be able to tank it up, and now it looks like Fenerbahce should be able to close this out. The first it. seed is gonna be theirs. They're going to go through to the elimination matches with an ace, with a victory over HKA. Fenerbahce, welcome to the Big Boys Club. Number one seed, another upset over HKA, saying it wasn't a fluke. We're just close, but we're a little bit better. 
Just impressive stuff from them all round. Hong Kong as an attitude as well, though. That has to be devastating, because you led the majority of that game. You were in a dominant position coming out from laning phase, and you just weren't quite able to close it out. They were smacking Patton around all through the early parts of the game, but it just seems like clockwork. You hit the late game, Patton knows what to do in these fights. His team fighting has been off point. His lane phase has high criticism, but Thaldrin leading the team on the engages to keep them in there. Crash with the active jungle lane, and Frozen with the clutch plays, as well as Japon not letting it get away from him. This has just been a team that has been fantastic to watch, and this is the group that got upset. It was the hard to tell who's gonna come out on top, and now we know for sure it's Fenerbahce. The number one seed coming in from Turkey. What a performance from them. You can see how much it means to both the teams, especially Hong Kong attitude there as well. Mission with his head in his hands,